Hi folks, hope you're okay today. It's Jason and uh, just want to give a street preaching report uh, concerning uh, a few days ago um, and uh, what's been happening in the street preaching. I was in Manchester the other day and um, the last few days and I just want to share some of the questions and thoughts that came up. Um, I had a really good day on Saturday. Um, found um, quite a lot of young people uh, wanting to engage with me and some of the things that they come up with uh, were interesting. One young person said to me, well, uh, what about Hawkins? You know, just he says that uh, God doesn't exist or, so, you know, he's got to be right. And, you know, these kind of arguments are not really good arguments. I want to say to you as a young person that that's an argument from authority. Uh, just because a scientist says something doesn't mean that it's right. You've got to have some kind of data or evidence to back up what you have to um, say is true. Another example is uh, we debated some young people on evolution and um, I said to them, give me the evidence. And one of them said, literally, Charles Darwin. I said, that's not evidence. Um, so you've got to you've got to present something, you've got to present some data um, if you're going to prove your point. And this is what a lot of young people don't do when you're out on the streets. They don't have the data to be able to share to prove their point. The other thing as well is the young people that I talk to don't really want to know the truth. Um, when you start to talk about the evidence for who Jesus is, uh, the immediate reaction is, oh, well, science says. And again, that's a fallacy. I mean, science says is what is called scientism. And the idea of scientism is, is that the only knowledge that is worthwhile is science. But that's blatantly not true. For example, this historical studies, uh, historical truth, uh, just as well as scientific truth. So that kind of statement is just not a good statement to say, well, you know, science says, and that's all that matters. So when you unpack the historical data about who Jesus is, what tends to happen is most young people switch off and they, they try to bring up questions to stump you, but they're not really interested in hearing about the evidence of who Jesus is. And I want to say to you as young people, are you really open-minded? And you might be offended by that question, but I want to ask you a qu again, are you open-minded? You say, yes, I'm open-minded. If you're open-minded, let me just bring a scripture to you. And let me ask you another question, if you are open-minded. It says, but God, this is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It says, but as is written, I had not here, sorry. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searches the things, ye the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man, which is in man. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we receive not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us. But the natural man, verse 14, receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So the Bible says that we're spiritually blind. It says that we all wear our biased glasses, and we look at evidence from a biased perspective. And until we have our eyes open, we can't see the truth. So I want to show and ask, ask the question, are you open-minded? And I want to show you that you're not as open-minded as you make yourself out to be. I, I said this to some young people on Saturday, and what was interesting, they said, oh, well, I've got all A's in my studies and uh, in religious studies, and I'm open-minded. And another guy said, oh, I've got all A's in my science studies, and I'm open-minded. I said, okay. 
have you really engaged with me? Have you really listened to the arguments that have been given, the evidence? The answer to that is they hadn't. And I just want to say to you, if you really are open-minded, then Christianity claims that Jesus died and rose again. Have you really investigated that? Have you really looked into the evidence? And the chances are you haven't, and that proves the point that you're not as open-minded as you make yourself out to be. So I want to challenge you as young people to go and read Mike Lacona's book on the resurrection. Go and read um, Jesus and the Eyewitnesses by Richard Balcom. Um, go, go, and, go on uh, Calm Apologetics. Go on... Um, Christian websites where there is evidence for Christian faith, R.C. Sproul, Legionnaire Ministries, the Reformed Theological Seminary, Covenant Theological Seminary. These do courses free that you can study about Christianity. And go on there and study and find out. And you'll find that there is evidence. But it's, are you willing to be open? Are you willing to be open? One guy did take a Bible off me last week. It was a study Bible. And he was a young person who missed a great deal of a lot of other young people. And he took a Bible and he went to st he wanted to study to find out. But what about you? It's all right criticizing. It's all right listening to these internet atheists who take pot shots who don't really want to have academic debate, but just want to create drama and all the rest of it. What about real, honest investigation, really open-minded searching for the truth? Why don't you go and do that? And I think you'll be surprised. I think you'll really be surprised if you look into things. And I want to say to a lot of you atheists out there, I know a lot of you think that you study Christianity, think you know what it's all about. But I just tell you that you don't really know what it's about. I've never met any of you internet atheists that really know what it's all about. You really don't. You can read the Bible. Uh, some of you have started to read the Bible. But if you're reading it to criticize it, you're not going to get anywhere. You can read Van Til. Some of you have been reading Van Til over the last couple of years. So what? Greg Banson, so what? As if you're trying to know what we know so that you can answer us. But that's not search for truth. That's not honest search for truth. That's just searching for ammunition against your opponent. I want to ask you to really be open-minded and really allow, really have a search for truth and allow God to really speak to you. And he won't speak to you unless you're open, truly open. And unless you're sincere, it's no good fighting against your parents who try to ram Christianity down your throat. And now you're reading Van Til to try and shut them up because you can say, well, I've read Van Til, Til and there's a load of rubbish. It's no good being angry at your parents because they rammed it down your throat. It's no good being angry at the church because sometimes they're anti-intellectual. Because God isn't anti-intellectual. Christianity isn't anti-intellectual. There are philosophers and people today who are academics who are coming to know the Lord. In philosophy, there are got some great thinkers today that have come to know the Lord. Uh, so don't be put off. But intellectualism has never get you anywhere unless you're open because Jesus is a person. I can put a cake before you, and that cake could be a strawberry cream cake. And the scientists can analyze the cream cake, can analyze all the data of the constituent parts of that cake. And the philosopher can pontificate about the meaning of the cake. But you'll never know the person of the cake who made the cake unless that person reveals themselves. And it's the same with Christianity. You can analyze the constituent parts. You can philosophize about the big issues of it. But until the person reveals himself to you, until God reveals himself to you, you're never going to know. And he's not going to reveal himself to you unless you are open to him. And I remember me in my search for God, I was open. I was wanting to know the truth. I'd read Bertrand Russell's History of Western Philosophy. And I've, I've read uh, Kafka and um, various post-modernist um, and 
postmodern writers, uh, Dostoevsky, Tolstoy, uh, Turgenev, read many, many, uh, Chekhov, um, Hemingway, um, many playwrights, many novelists, read and, and, and over the years, and I've searched, and I met a person, and his name's Jesus, and he's real. And he changes you, and he molds you, and he makes you anew, and he, and he comes into your life, and he's and he's an awesome savior, and he's an awesome God. And you'll never meet him unless you're open to him. Jesus says, "I am the good shepherd," and he lays down his life for the sheep. And he is the shepherd of your soul. He is the one that died for you on that cross. He is the one that gave his life for you. And until you're open to him, you'll never find him. You can think you're smart, you can think you're clever, you can try and get on Google Hangouts and beat Christians up intellectually. But deep down, you know that you're not right. Deep down, you know that what you're doing is not true. Deep down, you know that you're wrong. Because deep down, you know that you're, you, you have not got a fullness in your heart. You have not got the meaning... Um, of life and you can kid yourself by saying oh well i've got a wife a kid i've got a house i've got this i've got that i'm okay i don't need god really really what you're doing is hiding from god what you're doing is you prefer to live the way you want to live you enjoy what you're doing you enjoy your sin you enjoy living the life that you want you enjoy the fact that no one can tell you what to do because if there is a god he will tell you what to do and you don't like it so you pretend to say i don't need god i'm happy with what i have but you're holding on to your own life that you want to live and you don't want to give it up and that's the reason why you reject god not because you've got intellectual arguments not because you've confounded the christians because you want to live your way and you don't want to be told how to live because if god is alive he tells you how to live and you don't want that but jesus christ is the savior he's the king of kings he's the lord of lords and he came and he died on that cross for you my friend and he shed his blood for you and he wants you to come to him today and that's what i've been doing on street preaching i've been trying to share the gospel and i just want to say to you young people out there that there is a God, there is a Savior, there is a Lord, and He is the truth. And if you search, you will find Him, and you will meet with Him. You really will meet with the living God if you look to Christ. God bless you.